Okay. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Stephanie Sandala, Programming and Outreach Specialist at Library Lake, New Jersey. I'm so thrilled to have Matt Hirschberger and Natalia Andrax from Red Bank Public Library here to talk about building a seed library. Um, Natalia's beautiful illustrations are here front and center in her presentation, so I had to hype them up a little bit. And Matt and Natalia, do you want to go ahead and get started? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm going to go for a little bit. Um, I kind of uh, got the seed library off the ground a little bit. And then Natalia has done basically all of the work since then, kind of in the day-to-day -day maintenance and making sure we get lots more um, seeds coming in. So I'll just kind of go through the beginning and then I'll hand it off to her and then we can do kind of a Q and A. Um, but this was something that came out of, uh, it, was, it was one of the COVID projects when we were shut down and we were trying to find other ways that we could kind of serve the community without actually being open so much. Um, and we'd been talking about it for years, and right before COVID, we became a climate resiliency hub. With uh, It's a group called Communities Responding to Extreme Weather, um, and uh, there are a few other hubs in the state. I think like East Brunswick is one of them, and um, so we were trying to think about stuff that we could do that would have people paying more attention to their environment, and one of the things we had is we had a monthly sustainability program, and um, and so during one of those, we had New Jersey Audubon come and speak about their Gardens for Wildlife program. Uh, and that's something that they've been doing around the state where they're trying to push people planting um, native plants in their, in their yards because it's so much better for the local environment to have natives instead of like invasives. And they had like this whole list of how to do that. Um, and Natalia has done a ton of gardening and so, and she and uh, our programming director had done seed exchanges in the past at the library that had been really successful. And so we teamed up with our local environmental commission um, who was helping us organize these, uh, these programs once a month to try and get local, just local gardeners, local farmers to donate a bunch of seeds for the library. Um, as it turns out, it's super, super easy to get started. It's incredibly cheap to get started. If you're getting donations from seeds, you're just, you know, as long as for the first year, as long as you start super small, um, as people hear about it, it really starts kind of like building up. And, and we've, we've had an enormous amount of seeds coming in this year. And we had um, a lot of people taking it out. People are like handfuls of these seed packets that Natalia has created. Um, so hang on a second, let's see. So these are the reasons that why you would build a seed library. Um, they uh, help build food sovereignty and food security in the community by uh, helping to supplement um, people's food with homegrown food and vegetables. All of the seeds in the library are free uh, with the recommendation that people then save seeds at the end of the year and bring it back to us. We don't require it and I'll get to that in a little bit. Um, it also, we've had programs done by, I think the Rutgers Master Gardeners have had some, um, some people who have come in about um, uh, making more, planting more pollinator plants in the area because New Jersey is part of the corridor that monarch butterflies come through and they're a really big pollinator. And so it's a way that you can encourage pollinator plants without it necessarily being like, we're encouraging a bunch of bees to come into your, your yard. Um, so we, we, uh, we're trying to push that as well, and we're trying to push the planting of uh, native rather than invasive varieties of plants, just because local birds and local insects are used to local plants and they actually feed on them, and so you get a much stronger, more biodiverse, um, you know, local community if you have a lot more native plants planted. And one of the things that Gardens for Wildlife at NJ and Audubon does is they'll certify your yard as being a garden for wildlife, which means it encourages all these things. And if enough people in your town get the certification, then your town gets like the full certification. Um, and so that was kind of where this came from because our environmental commission is part of a, a lot of a lot of the environmental commissions in New Jersey run a thing called through a, a, a group called Sustainable Jersey, where they can get different levels of certification. And um, one of the things you can do is you can uh, get certified, you can have a certain percentage that's certified for Gardens for Wildlife. And another thing you can do is you can have a seed library. Um, so yeah, it was actually super cheap, easy, fun. Um, we, our initial startup thing is we bought a few, like a few hundred of those, these little small packets, kind of like little coin packets um, that we would put the seeds in. And then we had an old card catalog, which I'll show you a picture. You could see the back of it before, but I'll show you a picture of it in a second. Um, but that was all we needed to get started up. And then we just went around and started asking people for, um, for seeds. 
Um, so I already mentioned environmental commission is a really good place to start. The um, local green team, which is a subgroup of, of some environmental commissions, not everyone has one. Um, they're super helpful. And we had some members of that um, just go to different farmers. We had someone who just went through and went to all of the farmer stalls at the Red Bank Farmers Market and just asked them if they had any, like, you know, if they had any seeds they were able to give. And that's where some of the uh, seeds came from. And then we also had people we'd done former like gardening programs with that were able to kind of help us get the, uh, the first round of donations. Um, as we started to pick up, we started doing more events around the seed library to kind of encourage people to, well, to the very least know it was there. Like we have it in a nice spot right by our window in the, in the back of the library where it's, you know, where everyone likes to go and like look out at the water. And so People find out about it just by seeing it, but you know, um, and we've tried to promote on social media as well, but we found that the best thing was to find people who are already interested in the topic. And so like um, we've reached out to, there's a local gardeners group that we got in touch with. Um, and then you can also just reach out to local nurseries because sometimes they have excess seeds that they're more than happy to just give to you. Um, then uh, the, yes, yeah, so other events, we did the seed swaps, we did the garden for wildlife and we did the local beekeepers. If you haven't yet, um, Rutgers Master Gardeners have a long list of uh, really talented gardeners that come in and do talks on different subjects. Uh, they have people that do pollinators. We had a guy come in um, who did one on uh, composting. Um, and then we've, we've had people come in and just do like basic, like, you know, uh, there's one that was like um, how to, what, what, what you should be looking at if you want to like be doing gardening in the fall, like what you can harvest and plant in like September, October which was a really interesting one too, because I didn't know that it's still, we were, you could still plant stuff then. Um, but yeah, Rutgers Master Gardeners, and they, they will do, um, a, they have, they, I think they have a limit, but they'll do like a free, free uh, programs for you through the year too. Um, so this is what um, Natalia's uh, card catalog looks like, and this is how we've converted it. Um, you can see the signs up on the top are kind of like, and I'll show you a bigger, a bigger example of that in a few minutes. Um, but that, we, we kind of have the guide up there, and then we've got, it's, it's broken down into vegetables, flowers, and herbs. Um, flowers make up the biggest part of it. Um, but we, you know, we focused on three things. We focused on, you know, natives, pollinators, and food plants, because those were kind of around our three goals of like food sovereignty and biodiversity and, and, um, and uh, pollinators. Uh, but then you can see inside, they're kind of like uh, divided up into, um, you know, the, they're the actual like varieties and everything like that. And, and I, I'll let Natalia speak to what's in each of the packets, but each of those packets has enough where you can plant that and get, you know, at least at least a, a one good plant out of it. Um, that's the whole other thing. Uh, setting the seed policies was trickier than we thought it would be. Um, I think we've done most of the work you need to do. We reached out to East Brunswick and they gave us, they basically handed off a lot of the information. We of course would be happy to give you all of our information and we're gonna share all the links that are on our site at the end of this. Um, but it can't work like a lending library. This is because of seed laws, which are super strict and kind of weird. Um, if you're just giving them away and you're not requiring that people give them back, you're pretty much off the hook for most of the stuff. It's you can't require it comes back because then they start to get into all this like kind of weird patented stuff. So because of that, we don't have it formally cataloged and it's basically a trust system as to how much people take out. Um, you know, we say like, don't empty our drawers. And, but you know, like I've definitely seen people leaving with a bunch and it's like, if you're planting all of them kind of, you know, we, we don't really mind that. Um, we've put on our website that we cannot accept treated seeds, patented seeds, or seeds protected under the, uh, I can't actually see the other side of that because I got the thing here, but the Seed Variety Protection Act. Um, we don't have any way of checking that or knowing that. We don't test anything and we're not expected to test anything, um, but we do have to put that up there. And then, you know, we made it known what our list of priorities were, which I've mentioned a few times. And also we do not touch uh, invasive plants. So, I mean, there's some stuff that isn't native, like, you know, that isn't necessarily, you know, there's some like fruit and vegetable varieties, which did not originally come from the state of New Jersey, but we're not getting stuff that is actively harmfully invasive, which would be like English ivy, bamboo, Japanese honeysuckle, stuff that really isn't very good for the local ecosystem. Um, but, uh, you know, that I'll, I'll let Natalia speak a little bit more about that when we get to it. Um, this is the, you know, you, I'll, we'll send you the PowerPoint if you like after this, but this is the legal information that we found um, when we were, when we were kind of researching what we could do. 
it's, it's a lot, but it's basically that you just need to label stuff and it's kind of like, you know, legally covering yourself. Um, you're just not allowed to have patented seeds because they get super restrictive about it, but they also don't expect you to test anything. And as long as you tell people not to donate patented or treated seeds, you're, you're not going to, no one's going to come in and, you know, sue you on the basis of that. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of the legal stuff that, the, the, that we, we found. I'm not going to read the whole thing because that's kind of long. Um, and so for, from this bit, uh, and I'm sure there's more, but we can get into it more in the questions and answers section um, for how you maintain it. Uh, that from day to day has mostly been done by Natalia. And so I'm gonna allow her to, uh, unless anyone's got any quick questions for me right now, I'll, I'll, let, I'll hand it off to Natalia. Going, going. All right, Natalia, go ahead and take it away. Uh, hello, I'm Natalia, and uh, I am in charge mostly of and keeping the seed library now that it's been started. Um, and like Matt said, I've uh, mostly been maintaining that we get uh, seed donations in, I would say now at this point, like he said, it definitely started off a little slower when we got, but um, just uh, advertising, letting people know it was there. I think it's really, uh, like he said, it's picked up as the years have gone on, which is one. Um, I've never noticed, um, again, like he said, any issue receiving patent and seeds. We put that direct when we set, send out all our advertisements for the seed file. Never had any issues with that. And we've had a great influx of donated seeds from uh, and uh, the staff as well who do gardening and patrons have seemed very excited that all is free and policies and you don't have to bring them back. So that has been a, a policy that's worked well. And also like never seen any, I've never seen any problems of people uh, trying to you know, leave the library with a whole ton of maybe uh, a handful but it's always been a very excited patron who looks like they're gonna go home and grow everything. So always happy to see it. Um, for making individual packets and for uh, cataloging and organizing the seeds, it is uh, complex. There is definitely, I do a lot of research going into categorizing and organizing. So um, the main thing is I run a list of all the donated seeds that we get. And that helps a lot for keeping organized and also for to write on each little seed packet I make. So I can, um, if it would work, um, if you wouldn't mind sharing my screen, I could absolutely pull up the uh, document list. Okay. And is my screen visible here? Good. Yes, everything looks good. All right, good. this is the documented list. Perfect, thank you. <laughs> this is the list I've created of all this we have received at the library and it's uh, very helpful for basically gathering information for each type of seed and plant we get. This is the information that is gathered. It's mostly the plant's common name, the variety of the plant, if the information's available, better, if the seeds are organic, heirloom, and simple growing instructions are also included here. Um, since the seed out are pretty small. This list also serves as a great um, resource in place to put the growing instructions for each seed. So anyone who wants to get seeds from the library, they can always refer to this list and as shown here to see um, what seeds will add in the library are shown on this list uh, in real time and highlighted text. So I'll every so often also putting restock library, I will go through the whole library and see what we do have, what was taken already by, um, you know, people, and then I will update this list as well. So you can always pop on here, see what's highlighted in the, and I'll scroll down, just so you can see, these are the main varieties that we have available right now. Uh, and that's just an easy way for people to uh, look and see what we have in our system before they come pick up seeds. But this is also a very handy list for Mataloger because every seed donations, I can look at this list and see a whole lot of the information I need to catalog these seeds, which is super helpful. If I get a donation for beans um, and they are, uh, you know, donated in and we have donations, some of them are in uh, commercial seed packets and that's fine. Those contain a lot of information on them, usually really helpful to 
basically uh, like go in there. You can tell like what variety the plant is. You can see a lot of gardens. Those are really easy over here. We also get donations that have much more limited information from gardeners. Might only have like the plant and the year the plant was harvested. So for that, it's uh, that's normally when I come in and I do some much. I research the plant variety it is, the growing instructions, so that I can add it to this list. Um, but once it's on here, it's really helpful. And I get a seed donation, I can just check here and see the plant variety. I can see uh, like, you know, if it's or a perennial, which is, for example, one of the things we include on our packets to help growers uh, know how their plants are gonna act uh, when they plant them. But um, it's uh, definitely helpful, been helpful to have a whole list of the entire for um, cataloging and organizational purposes. Um, so let's see, any questions about that before I branch off a little bit? Got one? All right. Um, I have a question. Good. Sounds good. So <laughs> when you yes. initially set up, did you get all this information, like you started from scratch or there's some sources that she's used to pull all this together? Um, so I, I can, that, so I've got a few, uh, a yeah. few other links that I'll put into the chat because okay. um, there is a website like Seed Library. It's like a Seed Library newsletter, which I've, I checked into. I mostly I Googled it. And then the other thing I did is, is really, I can't emphasize how helpful East Brunswick was in just terms of giving us literally mm -hmm. all of their information. Um, but we also started super small. And so a lot of it has been just kind of like learning about it as we go. Yes. Um, you know, like the first year, I mean, I, I don't know, Natalia, if you can speak to it, but I think the first year, the only, the only seeds we got were like, we had one local farmer who gave us like a bunch. And then otherwise yeah. it was like one of our librarians has a husband who likes to grow hot peppers. And like, that was what we, we had, like hot peppers and a few like really <laughs> nice flowers from the local farmer. Yeah. And so we were able to kind of ease into it a lot more. And then I'll put the link. This, this list. Yeah. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> I would say that this list, like Matt's definitely started when it started it was a lot smaller so uh what you're seeing here in the information gathered in front of you definitely like a project and a lot of was added but as for figuring out what to record um I think again like Matt said we looked a lot at what other seed libraries were doing and kind of went from there trying to figure out what would be helpful for us to know when taking seeds out of the library I decided to include for this list this uh, you know, list of and right here. It's um, some general plant information, common name, variety instructions. It's also collecting information of some of the more specific stuff we're focusing on. Is it a plant? Is it a plant? I write those in as well specifically, um, but it did take some, um, some time, some thinking definitely to how I was going to write this list and what I was going to include. Uh, like you might notice that we don't include any Latin plants in this list at that And Well, that might be something that I'd be interested in doing just as like a gardener with botanical interest. It's not super helpful. I'm finding like two work patrons right now. They just want to know common name, the, the seeds they're getting, what they are. It's not something I've all the work and time to include because I don't think it's it's currently as necessary as like some of these other things they'd like to know. So definitely also a uh, pick and choose element to that to information you want to keep, but definitely looked at what a lot of others were doing and with what they had going on. Uh, Natalia, there's a question in the chat, which is, do you consider dates when accepting seeds as in seeds grown for 2022 versus seeds grown in 2020? I hear what you said. <laughs> Again, <laughs> let me look here if I can see it. Um, oh, yes. So that's a great question. Um, I definitely consider dates when accepting seeds at the, um, our, I'm going with currently is no seeds older than two years. So we're accepting seeds since it's 2022. 2022, 2021, 2020. But if I got seeds from before that year, consider uh, what they were and where they came from before just putting them in the seed library because seeds definitely have a shelf life. So older than two years, and it does depend and it differs depending on the plant and type of seed. Generally, older than two years of your seeds will 
and grow. So um, I do have a two year cutoff for the seed library, um, but there is uh, a couple of things to try to do. If you had a whole bunch of seeds that were older than that, but you were still wondering like, would these work? I'll do something that's a journey uh, test, which is something that I've done at um, this library a little bit, experimented with a little bit with some success. So like I had, for example, just a whole bunch of seeds that I would have loved to put in the library, but they were older than two years. I germinated them, which means I put them basically in like a wet paper towel, put them in a warm place with light, and then I watched how many sprouted. Um, that is a great way to tell if you have like a big batch of seeds, if sprout reliable, or if you try to do that and a whole bunch of them fail, you know for sure that these are not seeds that should go in the seed library. So that is uh, actually, it's a little more complicated, but that is something that's, and I would research did research before doing it. Possible to do though, if you have a lot of old seeds and you like me are hesitant to just, you know, throw them away. Because, um, that's a great way to test and see if they're any good at all, or if you should just throw them outside. Um, except seeds that are less than two years old because that's just the safest bet to have them grow well. Um, and to, to answer there are a couple other questions in there. Um, sorry, so uh, does our library have an official policy posted on the Seed Library website? Um, we have, we have a very brief policy on there. Uh, we did write up like a more full policy and um, I don't know why it's not on our site. It was at one point, but we must have decided not to. I think it's because it changed a few times. We were gonna be a, a little bit stricter about what we accepted and we've ended up not doing that as much. Um, but we do have, uh, if you look up a little bit, I posted in there, it's just redbanklibrary.org slash seed dash library. That's basically our public facing thing. And that also has the link to Natalia's um, this document, which I see a bunch of people are already in. Um, then uh, as to, do you apply, did you apply for a grant or some kind of financial help? Uh, so the only thing that we use, we've used so far other than donations is that um, it was that uh, the crew thing I was talking about, the communities responding to extreme weather. I don't know that they're still doing this because it's a pretty low bar to become one of their climate hubs. It's basically you just need to do programs on emergency preparedness once a year and also like, you know, give out information on different types of emergencies that could hit you. Um, but they also gave us a grant for helping to develop out some of our sustainability things. And we've put a lot of that towards our programming, but a big chunk of that we ended up putting towards the seed library, but it was not a crazy amount of money. It was, I think maybe a couple hundred dollars that we ended up spending. And we only spent, we bought, we did that for the first time this year. Um, you know, it helps that we had the old card catalog and it helps that Natalia was able to decorate it. But other than that, like it's, you know, you could literally just have a very simple filing system that you put out. Um, I know I've seen some, you know, some seed libraries, they don't do, they're not, it's not super convoluted. They didn't buy anything new. It's just like a, place on a shelf where they have a bunch of these like slots for the seeds. It's, you know, it doesn't need to be a whole lot more than that. And then for uh, this year, we did decide to shell out a little bit more to get more varieties. And um, we uh, and I'll have the links to two of the places that we went, we, we got those from at the end. But um, Natalia basically picked out stuff that we weren't getting through donations, but that we knew people would have an interest in. Um, so we, we ended up buying a, a fair amount of them, but it, uh, not a lot of money takes you a pretty long way when it comes to seeds. Um, and then let's see, for Samina's question, uh, how many librarians maintain the seed library information document? That's only in Italia. Um, it certain, I'll let her answer it. It certainly seems like she works on it quite a bit. So I don't know how much of a time suck that is, but it's, it's, it's a big project. Natalia, do you want to, yeah, here, I'll let you, I'll let you. Yeah, I was just trying to mute, sorry. <laughs> I would say, yeah, it's, um, it is a big project, but uh, like I said before, it started out a lot smaller. So like what you see in front of you is, and what you see the link for in the chat is a document. Um, but like Matt said, when we started this a year ago and we only had so many donations, this had been out as only like so many things. So it's really definitely been, it seems like a lot, but it has been a gradual process where every time we get new seed donations, we usually get 
a couple of plants that I we haven't had the donations for before, and I just add them to this list. So definitely, definitely a lot of maintaining. It's been gradual as as we go on. So that's been very helpful. It's never been a uh, <laughs> overwhelm at once. <laughs> and I saw. Go ahead, Matt. Oh, I was going to say the. Um... Justine had a question, do people take an entire envelope of seeds or count out how many they want? Um, it, it, it does come in envelopes, um, but Natalia picks how much goes into each envelope because some seeds are very large and some seeds are much smaller. So yeah. how it's divided up, but we do have these little like coin coin purse like envelopes that, um, that is what you, I'll, here I'll actually, Natalia, if you um, stop sharing your screen, I'll, I'll put up the, I think there's a picture of what the front of it looks like on one of my slides. So I can I can share mine real quick. All right. Well, let me just stop. So this is the this is the thing that we have. Um, this is what we display right above the uh, the actual library, and um, in the bottom right hand corner, you can see what the seed packets look like. Um, oops. Oh, hang on. There we go. So yeah, that's that's what we end up. That's how, that's how it looks. So it does have a year on it. It does have the varieties. It does have. Um, you know, and then the, again, a, a, another another graphic that actually Natalia illustrated down there. Um, but but yeah, so that's what that's what people see when they when they check it out. So they get an envelope, and basically an envelope is it depends on the plant for how much seeds it has. Like the, I, I keep trying to plant pawpaw trees in my backyard, um, but those are gigantic. Those are like big nuts. Um, and then uh, you know some of them are like you know it's like grains of sand, small like so. Natalia, I'll let you. I'll let you talk about your process there. Thanks, Matt. So yeah, like Matt said, um, it's depending on the plant, really come in a wide variety of sizes. Papa seeds, like Matt was talking about, almost like pea or a bean. It's like whole one <laughs> between my fingers, and they're very large. Um, for the larger seeds like that, I would put per coin envelope normally. Um, you can usually feel in each envelope since they're paper. If if partner, you, I would do this. These seeds are in there, but large seeds way less per envelope, and those teeny tiny seeds about the size of a grain of sand, you'll find more envelope. But um, since we have a totally free lending policy, um, I'm never too worried about putting too little seeds per envelope. I just try to put like uh, an amount that people could use in a small garden plot, and if they're really interested more seeds they're welcome to take more than one packet of that seed type um so one of the one of the questions did you start the project at a specific time of year um we we did um and, and it is gonna because it's gonna be a several growing season process to just grow it out actually now's a pretty good time to get some donations uh, i think that our first idea was just handing out like milkweed seeds and those you're supposed to plant before the winter starts because they actually have to be in the ground and we, we actually had a kids event where they made yeah. seed bombs which are like you know little clay balls that, that you roll them up in and then kids can go throw them and then they'll grow there the next year um but you, I mean, you know, uh, definitely the way to do it is to do a slow build. Um, you know, people will start taking seeds out in like late winter, like, you know, probably we'll probably start advertising around like February is really when we're pushing it, I think. And then people will be taking it out all the way through spring because there's some stuff you can't, you know, you can't plant for much later. There's some stuff that you need to like, some people will grow it inside for a little bit and then plant it in the ground. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't, now is definitely a good time to start, but I wouldn't worry too much about like when you start it because you can just get the ball rolling and just take whatever you can. There are, you know, more growing seasons than you really think <laughs> as it turns out. It's, it's a lot of the year. And if you just start building up some seeds, then you can kind of build on as, as time goes on. So, uh, but we definitely, we probably started around this time of year a couple of years ago. And then let's see. What approximates the minimal budget needed to establish a beginning seed library? So that's kind of hard to say. We literally just got the coin envelopes. Like to start off with, that was all we paid for. The, all of our seeds were donated from the start and we didn't have to spend anything on the card catalog. So it was just getting those little, those little manila, tiny manila envelopes and then Natalia doing a lot of, a lot of work like organizing them and everything like that. But it, it's mostly labor up front. It's it's not a whole lot of expense. 
Um, you know, if it depends on what you want to do for for how it for how the actual physical catalog looks. But you know, it could literally be a cardboard box that you put a bunch of these envelopes in. Like we we frequently actually we have a cardboard box that we'll take to like presentations and events, and we'll just give out free seeds like when we're tabling somewhere. Um, so you know, it could be no more than that. And given what you're probably going to get in your first season, it doesn't need to be more than that. And you know, then after that, it's it's you know what do you want to spend on for, for building something? Or do you have something already in your library that, could, that you could use instead? Let's see, do you have an example of the slots in the card catalog and direction? So here, I'll, I'm going to go back on the page real quick on my, on the, the PowerPoint real quick and see if I can. So this is what the slots look like in the, uh, the picture on the right. Um, so, so Natalia has done these like little laminated, um, images of each of the plants. And then those are kind of between those. Um, but I don't believe they all have the, they have all of the growing information there. I believe you have to go on online to get most of that. Am I, sorry, am I right, Natalia? Yes. So each of these little envelopes you see in the card catalog, I filled with seeds and then I just taped um, with a peach of sky, uh, the ends close, so this and they're all tucked in there. Uh, and then, since they're very small packets, Matt's right, the um, drawing instructions aren't themselves, but they are all in that Google Doc list I showed you available to view on our website. Yeah, and it's, it's um, let's see, so hang on, sorry. The, uh, are you storing the seeds throughout the year? Do you have a designated fridge or cool place? Nope, these are all just out. Um, there will be times when we'll get stuff and you know there's there's there are some seeds which takes it to plant them they have to be cold first i think that's i think that's one of the things with like milkweed but yeah. i yeah but um some seeds want cold stratification before they're planted um but we don't do any of that uh, in the library since we're building, I found that it's already really temperate and cool and, you know, not humid in here. So we've had no problems at all just storing the catalog. Um, and like Matt said, anything that should be refrigerated, like for cold stratification, um, that's basically the idea with them. You have to plant that plant out in the fall or put it in the fridge yourself before it can uh, grow next spring. So we don't do that at the library, and but we you know, noticed no issues at all with just storing the seeds in our catalog. We also, just to, uh, just to go back to the one I was thinking it and lost my train of thought, um, with, the, uh, with the list of seeds that we've got there, I know that a lot of libraries actually have that printed out and in like a binder, like on top of the, um, we don't do that just because the seeds, when they're going out, go out super fast. Um, and we don't want it to be sitting up there that we have the seed and then it's not in there. Uh, it, you know, if people find it and then look it up, it's, that's a little bit easier on us. And it also just would be adding one more kind of chore there. But what you could do is you could take basically the type of document that Natalia has and you could print it out. And then as stuff comes in, you either take it in or take it out um, and just leave that up there. But since we're not keeping track of who takes what, um, that's a lot trickier of a process. And so um, we do still, you know, have to remove stuff from time to time from the, the document, but there's, it's less of like telling people something's, something's there when it's not and more like letting them find something and then going to our website and seeing it there. So it's a little bit easier. Oops, sorry. Uh, this is also our list of, um, this is some of the uh, resources we have. Um, the two, um, the, the two links on the reputable sites to purchase from. These are the two that we, we got from. You can also, um, NJ Audubon also has a native plant sale. Uh, it's not an online thing, but they do, um, they do plant uh, native seed sales throughout the state uh, at different times a year. There's the next one coming up, I think is in Cape May, um, but there are a few other ones that they've got scheduled for, for the winter. Um, they're a good resource to check out and they may, if they, and if you just contact them, they may have some available that they could give you, or they may give, be able to give to you at discounted prices. Um, and nurseries are also interested in doing that. Um, the Native Plant Society of New Jersey is a really cool speakers bureau. Um, we actually had uh, one of their speakers come in recently and talk about 
their efforts to push uh, to push native plants. And they'll mention a lot of really good ones that are grown in New Jersey, as well as some that are uh, really invasive and bad, but everyone likes to grow, um, which then you're going to go and you're going to find that in your backyard. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to be shocked. But, um, but they, they do a good, they have, they do good presentations as well. And then I mentioned, of course, the Rutgers Master Gardeners. Um, but I think we have the links to all of these. Uh, yeah, we, we can, we can provide a QR code for the document. Um, yeah, so let's see. I think we got the links to the catalog and the page in there, but we need the, uh, yeah. And then, oh yeah, National Wildlife Federation um, and Native Plant Finder are good ones too. Um, there's actually a ton of apps that you can get to like help you identify if a plant is like native or something like that. And then that's kind of fun to play with. Um, I, which, which one is it? Seek, I think. It's the Seek app, which is done by, I play with this one with my kids all the time. iNaturalist. iNaturalist is a big one that helps you like take pictures of and identify plants. And so you can actually find out if stuff's native in your yard. And if you go around and you see a lot of native plants in your yard, then you might be able to just go right to the Gardens for Wildlife thing and get certified quick. Because um, they, you know, they give you points for a certain percentage of native plants and then having stuff like bird houses or bird baths or things like that. Um, but those are cool apps to check out and see. Um, Samina, for the how the donations are received, most of the time they come into the library. We did put a little box um, uh, right on our right on our entrance, right outside the library that says Seed Library on it. So if people are dropping it off at um, out, you know, outside of library hours, they can put it in in an envelope. Um, we haven't gotten a ton through that. Uh, it tends to be mostly people coming in and just giving it to us directly. Um, and we have a form. Natalia, how do you, yeah, what's the, what's the process for taking stuff in? Don't, we had a form, but I don't know if we're still. I got the form. I would say that, uh, yeah, when we originally started the seeds library and everything, we it did introduce a form that was for the purposes of it's had like the person donator's name and then basically information about the planet seed they're donating the planet was the year um i've noticed that people have not been uh finding and using our seed donation forms we've been looking on our website and instructions and including all of that relevant information with their donations so we did create a form <laughs> Been using it, but they have been following all the donation instructions. So it's still been uh, very helpful. And I've had very few with uh, people donating things where I'm like, what is this? It's not labeled. So it's worked out well. Another thing here, I'll share the I'll share the picture of our website too, because um, we do have a minimum amount of information that they do need to give us if we want to actually be um, accepting the seeds. But here, let me pull up the, or I'll share this real quick. Um, just a second. So this is our website page. Um, this is what, uh, this is what it looks like. Um, the link at the top where they take a look at the seeds currently available, that is to the, that document that is kind of a, it's, we have backend access to it. Everyone else just has viewing access to it. So anyone, but it's basically just a Google doc. Um, this is the flyer we made up that's hanging above everything. Um, and then, let's see, if you are donating. So down here, um, we, we say that we won't accept anything where we don't know the plant name and the years the seeds were harvested. Um, you know, heirloom or organic, we like to know just because it's nice to label that, but like, you know, that we're not going to and sometimes people just drop them off and they do it without us knowing their phone or inner, if they're perfectly good seeds, we're not gonna turn them away, but we do, you know, we obviously need to know the name and how old they are. Um, so we, we originally were going to require all five and we have since just been like, you know, let's make it as easy as possible for people to give us this stuff. Um, and then, yeah, then our rules with, this is as much as we have on like our policies. It's just, you know, can we accept treated or patented, and, you know, and then trying to highlight our our priorities. Let's see other cats. Um, Dorothy, with uh, our patrons having interest in native plants, that is, I would say, the thing people want the most is they want flowers and food plants. Um, I have people who are interested in hearing about native plants, and we do have with the programming we've done. 
We have people where afterwards I'll say, we have a bunch of native plants up in our seed library and then they'll go take them. It's That's more of kind of the priority in our larger, what we're doing. I don't know that people are uh, seeking it out as much as we'd like them to be, but that's also kind of a public education thing. It's just, you know, it's part of the programming we've done. And I do, there are people that do take stuff for that. There's definitely, um, Natalia, you can speak to this too, but like, you know, like with, you know, a lot of, a lot of schools and a lot of like kids programming is now around like pollinators and seed bombs and stuff like that. So milkweed is definitely something that is, I think, even though it's a weed and it's also mildly toxic, like it, it is actually people are interested in it now because it means your yard's going to have a bunch of butterflies in it. Let's see. Why don't we ask the name of the seed donor? That was on our form, but it's mostly just so that if we can reach out to them if we have questions or anything like that. Um, it's not, you know, the whole, we're, we're trying to make it as low touch as possible. And, you know, we do have sometimes where like, um, specifically when we've done like uh, farms, like I remember in our first year, we had, uh, this hurt, I, I remember the farmer's name. I don't remember the farmer, Lisa Bagwell, but she gave us a ton of these and we actually put her name, I think it was Cobo Farm. I forget what the name of the farms was, but she, we put the name of the farm on all of, all of her, all of her, the donated ones, just as kind of like a. She, she gave us seed packets originally in car was one of the places we got our idea. She had um, written and labeled all of her scenes and also written, yeah, her on there. Um, but it was a and then the little envelopes labeled that way. So I think that was also a starting point for us in uh, trying to figure out the best way to uh, handle the seed packages as well. Um, we have a question. This one's probably Natalia. How often do you go through the inventory? Like, how do you know what's, what, how do you know when the last of something has been taken and you need to update the Google Doc to unhighlight the seeds? That's a great question. Um, it definitely varies depending on the season. So, um, for example, um, we are getting, uh, I would say, honestly, probably definitely still people taking out seeds, but more it's kind of end of the season. People are having getting seeds and dying. So I would say we're getting more donations. So I am, I check the seeds, likely, but it is not really needing to be updated. Um, but for example, in the time the summer, I'm trying to check it way more often and update it constantly because it, I would say spring to summer period, people are taking, you know, to start a whole lot of seeds. So um, probably would check it less in the winter and fall, though I still like every two weeks I would. Um, but in the spring and summer, when people are actively uh, taking seed donations from it, I try to check it basically time once a week if I can because I know that it's going to need to be updated during those times. And um, mm -hmm. Samina, for your uh, question about other examples of events that we've done related to the seed library, we are of course having the same problems as everyone else in terms of um, getting people to come into programs at the library. One of our first, because we we do this remote sustainable Red Bank, uh, which is the which that's our sustainability program that we do once a month, but that's been remote more or less the entire time, and that's the one that's it's been nice because we've been able to get speakers from NJ Audubon and um, and from uh, the Na uh, Native Plant Society of New Jersey, and like you know from all over the state to do the talks, but the in person ones have been a little trickier. We did have actually uh, a local gardener come in and um, showed people how to like repurpose old like cardboard in their home as like, uh, you know, planters. And, you know, so she, and she ended up just giving out a bunch of plants that she'd grown, like like basil plants and like all this, all these like little seedlings that she's done. Um, in terms of it being successful in terms of size of people, um, <laughs> the amount of people seeing it, it's not a ton. So we've done a lot of marketing on top of that. Um, this, uh, these past couple months, Natalia's made up special like a, like um, uh, graphics on specific um, plants that are in our collection, including the milkweed, including the pawpaw, um, which is like a local fruit. That it's, it's, it's a native fruit, but it tastes like mango and pineapple and it can grow in your backyard. It's, it's, it's amazing that it's not more popular than it is. But um, so she like would highlight those and kind of do like, you know, did you know? And then like, you know, kind of like instructions for them. And we'll push that out over like our social media as well as putting them up in the library. 
Um, but we, you know, otherwise most of what we're doing is marketing through just social media and our newsletter. It's not, we're still, we're, we just reopened for, we're now open three nights a week. We were at just one before, and that wasn't the night that we were doing sustainability programs. And so we're kind of still getting back into that. If, you know, I, I, but I would suggest just, you know, general like marketing online and hanging out, fly, hanging up flyers. Uh, the events that we've done obviously have been great, but also bringing the seeds to any tabling event. Um, and that's been really like Natalia made up like basically just a basket that's full of seeds that we've taken to a bunch of different places. So if we go to like a school, you know, it's just free seeds right there. And then if someone asks, oh, it's our seed library, we have thousands of these or not, not maybe not thousands, it's hundreds though. But, you know, we have hundreds of these back at the Red Bank Library. And so that's just, it's, you know, we're a small enough town where it's just kind of about getting it out little by little. And, um, you know, and it, and it really was, this year was the first year I noticed like a ton of people coming in and just like, you know, going through it. And I don't want to say ransacking because that sounds bad. It was very good. But it was like, this was the year we really saw a lot of people starting to pay attention to it. And we're in our, I guess we started having the conversations in like late to 2020. So, you know, we're, I don't, I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's right, but yeah, I think that, yeah. So it hasn't been long for it to really pick up, but you know, it's been helpful that it has been a slower process like that. Um, Cause it would have been overwhelming if it is what it is now back at the beginning. That did, I don't know if I missed any, any questions in here. Don't think I did. I see um, one suggestion about using a uh, QR code for our oh, yeah. Google Doc library. I think suggestion. That's not something we've um, looked into yet. Um, but yeah, like we discussed, it would be too um, try to update this list all the time. Probably too hard to have a full printout uh, that needs to be reprinted and updated. But I mm -hmm. think something like a QR code is a good idea. We can, you know. <laughs> yeah, we should totally do that. That's <laughs> we could yeah, just yeah. good idea. Um, yeah, any other any other questions? You can unmute or put it in the chat. Do any volunteers? Uh, that's a great question. No, not currently. Uh, I think currently I'm one organizing and cataloging for the seed library. And more people, but um, again, since it's something we didn't start super long ago here at the library. I have not done so, but in the future. <laughs> yeah, that definitely could be something we, we pull people in on, but, but yeah. So um, we'll, uh, we, can, we can send out, uh, I'll have, uh, I'll hand everything off to Stephanie and we'll send out all of our links and stuff. And uh, I'm not actually going to be working at this library a whole lot longer, but uh, we'll give you Natalia's information, um, and you can uh, you can reach out to her. And I'm you know we we got we got we were able to get ours launched because of the generosity of other librarians. So we would of course be happy to help other people do the same thing. So. Yes, thank you, Matt and Natalia. This is so, so helpful. I like the information about Rutgers Master Gardeners too. That was so great to learn about. So this has been super helpful. Yes, and I see everyone. lots of positive feedback in the chat as well. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you. I'm so glad we could do it. Yes, and if anyone came in late, I'll be sharing the PowerPoint and the links so you have all that information as well. Thanks for being here, everyone. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Larissa. I can't wait to hear about everyone's seed libraries in the future. This is really exciting. Thank you very much. That was that was great. I really oh, enjoyed that. Yeah, I'm a master gardener and I'm in the Rutgers Environmental Stewardship Program, but I'm actually, <laughs> I'm a board of trustees for the Mustatin Public Library, but I'm in the garden club. And so one of the ideas that were floating around was a seed library and the librarian, um, I don't know if she's on, um, Justine Johnson. Um, she was very excited about the idea. So this project is gonna get started with the help of, um, 
two other master gardeners uh, and a garden club member and then the librarian. And I'm just sort of helping to advise them and, and such because I already have involved with native plants and stuff. So this will be very interesting. It was very nice to see your website. Um, I think Chatham has one and I think Trenton or somebody has one. So it was very, very helpful. Thank you. Yeah, there was there was a link, the seed library, the seed storage, the Weebly site that I, I shared up there a little ways, um, which uh, they have helped. It looks like they're a resource that has maybe helped a lot of people set them up. They did not help with ours. Let me see if I can find it. It was up here. And what was this again? The Weebly? Yeah, it's seedlibraries.weebly.com. We'll see if I can copy and paste it. Um, but, oh, no, no, wait. I'm thinking of a different thing. I'm thinking of the uh, edible, edible jersey, edible communities. Um, here, I'll put both of them back in the chat real quick. But um, the edible jersey one has also helped people with like seed storage. And, you know, we're, you know, seed libraries, okay. different things. Seed bank. Maybe, yeah, I think I've looked at, yeah, okay. I've looked at some of this. I kind yeah. of researched this uh, last year, but I, you know, it, I don't think it really kicked off. But now I think um, it's probably a good time to do that. And I, I don't know if I got the answer, but you said you put in a few seeds. You think six is enough? Or, I mean, it depends on the size, if people can see it. Do you put it on any kind of tape or is just loose in the, in the packet? I, so we have those little, um, them in the photo these little coin we do put them loose in that packet and then i tape the packet close to make sure if the seeds are small they can't fall out once they're okay. in the catalog and then for the amount per packet it definitely depends on this our little tiny seed i will put like like i don't count them i i just try to dump them in there so there's like a small amount in the box like enough for someone to basically be able to throw a line of them down for a line of plants uh if they're super huge seeds i would do way less also because two seeds usually not so many will fit so yeah i have these two super huge seeds i do like four to six a okay. good estimate but with seeds smaller than that it's really just a, a poor situation and have you done any kind of um do you have any uh, gardens on site that complement your seed library at all? Because that's one of the things that um, we're looking at with a, there's an Eagle Scout that wants to do a project. And I was thinking that, you know, if he would like to um, put in plants that people can actually see in the, yes. in the front garden and then walk in and ask for those seeds through the seed library, then it's sort of a complimentary that's sort of um, experience. Do you have anything like that going on? We, we had a lot of talk about that. Um, our local environmental commission wanted actually, because we're right on the water. And so there was one, they wanted to do a meadow down at the bottom because we're kind of on top of a hill and then the hill goes right down into the Navasink. And so they they wanted to put in like a meadow there with like, you know, local wildflowers. And we the only thing that's ended up happening is Rutgers actually put in a um, uh, a stormwater, or a, a, what's it called? Yeah, the, you need a rain garden, garden type thing. Rain garden. We did a rain garden, we to clean yeah. and filter before it gets down to the Yeah, that makes sense. That's that's the only thing we've done. We haven't done anything with uh, with with our seeds, which would be a very cool project to do. And if we can find any Eagle Scouts, I will for sure. Try to go <laughs> I would, believe me, he didn't want to do that. I mean, he wanted to do a pergola, and the board was like, mm, you know, we have other visions here. And then I said, you know, one of the things people have been wanting is just expanding the gardens, a poet garden or, you know, and so we, he landed at a, like a pollinator native plant garden. Um, and so um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to assume he's going to definitely pick some plants that folks would donate. Um, so, okay, I think that I have enough information. I'm sure that our um, librarian may reach out to um, selfishly ask for things from you um, and uh, appreciate it in advance. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Yeah, so, thank I mean, just since a, I got sorry, into gardening mentioned... this year, I actually planted um, vegetables and herbs and flowers. So um, in the community garden, so I really got into it like with got, got my hands dirty, <laughs> pretty much. That, yeah, that's... no, that's fabulous. That's fabulous. So, just um, to one of the things that we actually, when we originally started doing this, part of the plan was to do it with the local community garden. Unfortunately, 
when we started planting that, our community garden did some lead testing and found that they had a lot of lead in their mm. soil. And so our community garden has been shut down for now. Oh, and we're still trying to far. find a new site while that's being like mediated and stuff. But that would be a really good spot to start. I think that I was a local garden in a red bank around here at a uh, local coffee shop that was a little community garden. And I did do it unofficial but I did donate some of our seed library seats to them as well and they were really appreciative so yeah I think going out to like small small gardens and seeing if they're interested is definitely a great, great way to get word of the seed library out there as well <laughs> yeah and uh, I have a uh, we have a I did an environmental stewardship project of a, a parking lot area behind a pharmacy Boyd drugs it's about 120 feet long by I don't know five feet and that's all been planted with the uh, native plants to the zip code, you know, area. And so when I come down there, I'll be sure to give you some seeds. Okay, take care. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you, Samina. Yes. Thank you, Matt and Natalia. This was great. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Thanks so much for having us. I'm good spread information. <laughs> yes.